finally able to get back out on the project for phase two. Man, it's been a month of nothing but rain. Finally, we got a break and we jumped back out here as quickly as we could to uh, today where the intention is to get all of the clover fire breaks planted in between the oak trees and around the perimeter that will be my food plot slash road and ultimately a fire buff buffer when I do decide to burn the warm season grasses. But we've got a lot to do today, primarily get this clover all in the ground. We're gonna put a soybean food plot in down there in the cove and some of this dual season from Pennington over here in this corner. But um, just jumping out and really anxious at the chance to finally have some dry weather. The one thing the rain has been good for, all of my trees, I bet you we have 99% survival on these trees, which is fantastic. What a beautiful day. Okay, one of the challenges for guys is to figure out how to adjust the seed metering system down small enough to accurately seed out an ultra tiny seed like this Durana and Patriot Clover. I mean, these things are smaller than a grain of sand. One of the ways that we've always done that with the Ferminator is to basically close the seed metering bushings and open them a hair, I mean, just a hair of a fraction, almost so small of a, of a gap that it doesn't look like anything could possibly fit through it. And we've done really well that way. Uh, it's surprising that the clover seed goes through. But the other way, a little more reliable, is to open it up to uh, a setting that would allow a companion crop like this wheat seed down to fall through the metering system. And we're only putting this wheat at around 40 pounds an acre with our five pounds of clover. So what we're doing is we're opening it up at 5 16 to 3 8 of an inch to allow that wheat seed to accurately seed out for the 40 pound rate. And guess what, our five pounds of clover works out perfectly and we can get a companion crop that's gonna act as a, a protectant for this clover as it begins to start its life cycle. That, that wheat will shelter it, protect it, keep the weeds suppressed. You mow off the wheat later on in the season and you've got a great stand of perennial clover. So we're back here in this one acre northeast cove food plot in the project. And I just got done running through here with the Ferminator and one pass aggressive disking, 20 degree angle, broke the soil open. Man, it's mid 80s today and the wind's blowing. This soil is just drying as quick, as quickly as I'm opening it up, which is awesome. So I was gonna let this sit a while, um, but it's by the time I got to the other side of the field, this where I started is already dry and crumbling down. So I just changed my angles and I'm getting ready to set the, uh, the seed metering system up here. I've got the dual season Pennington product and I'm gonna be seeding this on the second pass. And the method I'm gonna do with this is drop it into loose soil and get a little bit of soil coverage by the disc, throwing some soil over it, but cold packing it in this nice, moist, crumbling, dry soil here. It's just right at that perfect point. But the, this food plot blend is, uh, they call it dual season for a reason. It's got soybeans, it's got iron clay cowpeas, it has sorghum, and it has buckwheat in it. And the idea behind it is you plant it as a summer annual, and of course the deer are gonna utilize the forage all summer long. There are plants in there that are highly attractive to deer, soybean and cowpeas um, primarily. But if you let this crop stand into the fall time when the grains are still available, your deer are gonna utilize this food source all the way into fall, late fall and, and winter time until the seed is consumed off the stalks. My plan with this is a little different because I really wanted just a holdover crop here in this corner. I'm planning a, a warm season annual, but I didn't want to spend the money on Roundup Ready soybeans for this, this little cove because my intention is I really want this to be a fall, winter, cereal grain and greens plot this year. So what I'm gonna do is plant dual season in here. Here it is, uh, you know, middle of May and probably about the last of August, I'm gonna mow that off and disc it in the ground and I'm gonna plant my my fall blend in here. So this is a perfect solution for an inexpensive plot to do a fall plant. Um, if you want to utilize it for the dual season, fantastic. That's what it's designed to do. If you want to do this temporary holdover crop that's going to be attractive to deer all summer long with the intention of putting a fall annual in, it's a great idea for that as well. Right, 
we're just getting off and looking at the results from the, the planting process, man. And you, this really, the soil broke down super well and just got a great amount of light coverage over the soil. We've got, there's a sorghum seed right there. Uh, right, right there is a buckwheat seed. I just moved that soil around like that. Over here, look at this colder packer indention. There's a soybean right there that I just uncovered. Just perfectly placed, packed it in. This was two passes with the Ferminator and it's done. So thank God for the sun and wind today because it's really helped us a bunch. But getting excited guys, this, this is starting to really take shape. Check it out, dual seed mixture by Tab James. <laughs> Two types of clover. One bucket. <laughs> Two types of clover. One bucket. <laughs>